Okay, this is just a product review about... It's not really a product review. This is just first impressions for um, something we bought recently. In Leadersville, we inherited the studio, as I might have mentioned previously, if you've looked at the studio at all. It was designed kind of almost like a project studio setup. Sometimes when we've had bigger sessions, like live recording sessions, it was never really designed to support multiple mixes uh, from... From the headphone mixer, there's basically QA and QB, and there's just one wall box in the studio. There's quite a few instances where you where you look at it, the studio was designed for one purpose, really, and it never really took into account expanding or looking at other options. Um, but what I've wanted to do for a while is actually incorporate more headphone mixes into the studio. We're currently running our headphones off the Allen Heath Q16. In order to get more mixes in the studio, get more headphone mixes, like individual mixes, so what the options really were, like drill some more holes in the wall and solder in some new XLRs, or another option is something that gets used quite often in like installs is running audio over Cat5. Now, I'm not talking about like Focusrite RedNet or Dante, which is like digital audio transmission over Cat5. I'm actually talking about running analog signals through the Cat5 systems. Um, I've just grabbed the box now just to show you what I'm talking about. Right, what I have actually looks a little bit like something from the Matrix where you got like a big old thing and there's a couple of old tails. So, Cat5 input. And it goes to four female XLRs. And basically, these these units, as far as I know, can't transmit phantom power. But all I want to do is actually connect the audio signals into the live room for headphone mixes. So I've got a couple of XLRs running out of mix 9 and 10, I think, from the Allen Heath Q16. In the side wall, I've got eight Ethernet ports in the studio. So basically all this does is the four cables, all the four XLRs connect into here, and then they run four Cat5s into the other room, and then they basically got another one of these boxes in the other side, and that splits off into the studio. Bought them yesterday, set them all up. It works. And it also means that one of the things I'm always constantly thinking about is I don't want loads of cables running along the floor through the middle and having like cable nightmare and mess. I'd rather try and keep everything as tidy as possible. This Cat5 is closer to where we've put the drums in the studio. I'll just lift it up and see if you can see that. So drums these days, opposite or facing us now, the stage box is literally the bottom of the window there. So there's a cat five point just next to that light. And if I zoom in a little bit, zoom, you might be able to, you can't really see it, the light gets in the way. The light gets in the way, the light gets in the way a little bit. So, where were we? I'm trying to figure out what the angle was, no! <laughs> Well, just lie like that. That's a bit better, isn't it? Uh, no, let's try and sort that out. Yeah, that's close enough. These units are built by Thoman. Uh, I'll put a link in the in the description as well. Um, and they are called the Snake Cat Three FC. So they do. They they say. DMX. <laughs> so you can see it. <laughs> well done, John. Um, yeah, Cat5 Snakes, DMX. Um, so they're originally for lighting, so you, for installs, you could run these and they did do that. So they're not really recommended for audio, but I'm using them for headphone mixes and so far, so good. Um, £15.90 at the moment on Thoman. So I think the closest thing that I've seen. Radial catapults, which um, 144 quid for the splitters, so you can actually put XLR in and run it through. So if you wanted to split off into like recording, like monitor mixes, they could be quite good. Um, or something similar is about 100 pounds. So this is 15 quid, and for what I need it to do, it's great. It doesn't. I don't think it'll do phantom power, but I don't want it to do. And then we've got, we've actually got a phantom power unit if we ever did want to run extra cables into the here. That's an option in the future as well. What I've also been looking at is we've got um, a hole in the wall <laughs> into the live room, which we run an instrument lead through 
to connect up with um, guitars and amps of like combos and have players playing here. Um, what we do when we go to Rockfield is because the distance is quite far. The long lead, whenever you use long leads in studios, you normally get a bit of noise and the degradation. The quality of the signal isn't as good just because of interference from outside. Um, TC Electronic came out with the teleport. Way. And what this does is there's two units. They look a little bit like DI boxes, but it basically takes a guitar signal, it's and then splits it into an XLR signal, and what it'll do inside is it'll split the signal, almost duplicate the signal into two, invert the phase of one, and send that into the send that down XLR leads. And then when it gets to the other side, there's another one of these boxes which will say receive, um, which is in the live room. I can't be bothered getting it because oh, I might get it, you never know. Well, we're going to go in there in a second anyway. And it's pretty similar and receive, and basically means that like you can then run, um, it'll convert the signal back into instrument lead with the impedance, and it'll just run into the amp. So it means effectively that I could run, when I'm recording in the hall, I could run signals, I could run guitar amps back into the live, into this control room, use it as like a nice cab booth or like an isolation room and run amps really, really loud without having to worry about spilling the other room. Um, in the other room, I'm pointing over there because that's, the like, that's where the hall is. So I'm really excited about using that. I'll do another video when that's coming through, but what I'm going to probably do is with these leads, I've got red and green are going into the headphones. I've got two more. I'm thinking what I'm thinking about doing is actually just connecting like that straight to the cat signal and running the guitar lead into the other room that way. So it just means that I've now effectively got almost like eight XR in and out so I can kind of use for different purposes in the studio and just expand the IO a little bit more but also keeping the room tidy. So I'm just gonna go I'm just going to go in the hall, into the live room and show you that. <laughs> so the other thing that happened in the studio this week is we got rid of... There was a giant black rug in the hall here. In the hall, in the live room. And to be honest with you, it got really dirty and it was just a pain, it was just a pain to work with. And since we've taken it out, it looks a little bit nicer in here. So that's one of the reasons why we got rid. Did a bit of a rejig around. We got rid of the keyboard stand that was in that corner. And we've made Amp World. And then my plan is, here's a teleport receive. No, so it looks pretty much the same as the other one. And then that lead will then, just for example's sake, it goes into the fender here. So it just means it's a little bit easier. Here is the um, other unit that's kind of connected in. And it's going into port 8, which is just down here. So that, that Cat5 cable there, and I've got two left over. There's another two which is just connected into a snake, which run into the headphone unit over there. So that's actually all working. I tested it yesterday. So I've now got um, headphones, main headphones here, which I think is QA. And I've got another Behringer set of headphones, the power plays, which almost like last case, don't really need them just now. Um, they go into this stage box here. But then if we do need to actually add more ports in the future, more XLRs and more headphones, I've got eight ports, like two Cat5 ports on each side of the room. So if we need to expand some stuff, I can do that as well. So this is the setup that we've had. Now, the annoying thing, as I said, about the design of the room when we moved in, this is obviously the logical place to put the mics. Um, with how we've been working with drums recently, what I'll tend to do is with the cable drum, that can, we just, I just normally just wheel that over so the, the cable drum's there. And I've got some photos on Facebook. I've got a 360 photo I can get up as well and show you. And that kind of goes in there. And then it just means that I've got one cable that's running around rather than having tons that go across the room and make a massive mess and leave this space free. Um, so far, it's been great. So that's the two new bits and pieces. The Cat5 is for DMX. It will work for headphone sends. For what I needed it for, for the headphone mixes, it's been brilliant. I can't recommend it enough for 13 quid, 15 quid. Um, if there's Cat5 ports in your house, I'd recommend using it. And it saves me rather than spending like £200 on some headphone mixes. Right, let's have a look. Uh, that's a better angle. God, it takes me ages one time and the next one is fine. So, that is 
where I'm at today. Um, let me know what you guys think. If there's any other applications you could think it'll be useful for using. I'm thinking about getting like a hundred meter, a hundred meter Cat Five uh, drum just so I could send um, a couple of headphone mixes into the hall when we record in there. As always, like and subscribe. If you have any questions, even in the comments below, I'd love to hear from you and go to see what you guys think. I'm in the process of shooting some more videos and some more tutorial content. If there is anything you want to hear, any questions you want to ask, drop me a message. Um, but hopefully see you guys very, very soon. Cheers. Oh, shit,